breast cancer is a massive public health problem worldwide. And whereas the incidence is plateaued in the United States and mortality has decreased significantly, there is still 40,000 women dying of breast cancer every year in the United States. If you look at breast cancer care, as I have for over 50 years, the presumption was that if you remove the tumor, things would be fine. Everyone used to think that each cancer cell in and of itself could recreate a cancerous lesion. And Max and his colleagues came up with a very novel notion that there might be a small population of what we call the cancer stem cell, some call the tumor initiating cell, that this very small population of cells is actually the driver of the cancer process. A team led by Dr. Wish and other collaborators discovered that there are certain rare cells within a cancer that can be isolated and when implanted in animals will give rise to the whole tumor. They were able to really understand that there were cells that had the potential to develop into many different kinds of cells. So the cancer may shrink down by even 95%, but if the 5% of cells that are left are stem cells, it just comes right back. So we're gonna have to figure out how to attack the cancer stem cells in order to really make fundamental progress and cure more patients of cancer, not only breast cancer, but other kinds of cancer. Dr. Wisha has shown that one of the main ways to do that is to really understand what are the molecular mechanisms that are involved in self-renewal. So many groups around the world have followed on this work to really understand specifically for each tissue, how do the cancer stem cells behave and how can they be targeted? Everyone is now arguing that perhaps the real target that we should be looking for in all solid cancers may well be these cancer stem cells. So this is really a paradigm shift in how people think that cancers develop and how drugs should be targeted. This is where Max is applying much of his research now, looking for drugs that would specifically target cancer stem cells and then applying those in the clinical arena. Well, I grew up in uh, New York, in uh, Queens, and my father actually died two weeks before I was born, and so I was brought up by my mother. And my mother, being a Jewish mama, I think always valued uh, education and learning. She really imparted this kind of thirst for knowledge with me really at a very early age, and I think that that had a great uh, influence in my career. Of course, I also learned that I could get out of doing chores by reading books. I thought that my career was going to be as a physician scientist and that the real breakthroughs in medicine had to come from basic understandings. And Stanford was a place that was so well known for its basic research. I was an assistant professor in, in the early 70s. And Dr. Stockdale was a physician scientist, just like I wanted to become. So he was really my role model. Max came to me and said he was interested in laboratory research. That led then to a project which related to growth in embryonic tissues. I worked on basic mechanisms of how the genetic material or DNA is replicated. And that's the theme that he still is with, how tumors grow and what uh, causes growth and abnormal forms of growth in, in memory tissue. So I thought that if we could make inroads into understanding cancer biology, we could completely change the way cancer was treated from an empiric science to an absolute science based on laboratory understandings. When Max finished at Stanford, he had his clinical training and then he went to the National Institutes of Health, which was a period of extreme productivity on Max's part. His interests were the extracellular matrix, uh, the surface of the, of the epithelial cell, and that's when he then left NIH and went to Michigan, and, and that then evolved into uh, his uh, current studies on uh, cancer stem cells. And I was quite fortunate within just a few months of being at Michigan, I was able to get grants from the American Cancer Society, uh, which were funding young investigators, and that really launched my career. And the chairman of medicine, a very famous physician, Bill Kelly, called me into his office after I'd been here three years and said, Max, how would you like to lead the division of hematology oncology? Two years later, another opportunity came up. 
I remember um, being a medical student from 1983 to 1987, hearing of the excitement of a new cancer center being created. He was the initiator of the cancer center, uh, and he led that institution for 26 years. He was such an outstanding scientist, an outstanding clinician, that it almost seemed a foregone conclusion that he would be successful. He was able to bring together different personalities, whether they're in the basic science laboratory, in the clinical arena, and create this into one of the largest comprehensive cancer centers in the country. Dr. Wisha's vision for the cancer center was that the laboratory knowledge would reach the clinic very quickly. This is, of course, called translational research. And it is, of course, very popular and nobody thinks twice about it now. But at the time he conceived, very few people were speaking about it, if anybody. The physician scientist is really at the interface of the laboratory and the clinic and can put together this kind of translational research. He created the culture where that was the goal. In spite of the perhaps prevailing currents telling us that you have to specialize. You either have to be in the clinic or in the lab. You can't be in both places. The trend is, as, as the administrative and clinical responsibilities become so demanding, is to sort of down-regulate your laboratory uh, efforts. And Max seemingly is able to do all of these things simultaneously. It's an amazing accomplishment. With my PhD scientists, I actually have them come with me, come to my clinic, and actually see the patients with breast cancer. And this uh, reinforces to them how important this research is and how the treatments that we're developing today can affect these women right today. And our conversation will always end with what do we need to go back in the lab to do to figure out how to understand this patient's disease. Of course, the patients know he's a world-renowned researcher, but when he's in the room with the patient, he is their doctor, and he's very much present. I came here in 1978, and so I predated Max by only two years. Max is one of these people that is a true, wonderful human being, both inside the work world and outside the world. There are just few people that have such a wonderful collection of skills that they can be so successful in the research arena, the clinical arena, and then also be such a wonderful giving person. He'll drop everything for any person he thinks he can help. I'm actually very proud of the people that have we recruited and came to Michigan. Seven of them are now leading comprehensive cancer centers in the United States, including Dr. Beverly Mitchell, who leads the Stanford Cancer Center. He gets excited about new ideas that he has, whether it be about cancer stem cells, about new therapies for cancer, and he'll immediately try to share them with people and uh, get their feedback. Clearly one of the areas that has really uh, captured the excitement of everyone is immunotherapy. The idea that you can harness the body's immune system to actually fight cancers. I feel that Max Wisha's work will pave the way for those new discoveries. As I try to impart on my students and trainees in the laboratory, uh, the, the field of discovery is the most exciting of any field that you can have because it requires great cre uh, creativity. Both of us are um, curious. I think that's probably the defining characteristic. If you ask many scientists, all of us are pretty much, I mean, if we're really smart, we'd be mathematicians or physicists. <laughs> Most of us are smart enough, but probably the defining characteristic is just curious about learning how things work. Well, I think that every day that there's something that you don't expect that happens. And what keeps me motivated is a combination of my patients that keep reminding me, one, how much progress we've made, but how far we still have yet to come. And then on the other hand, in the laboratory, I see all of the great things that can happen, including all of the young people that come into the laboratory with great new ideas and fresh ideas. And that really keeps me motivated, being able to train the next generation of researchers too, and the next generation of physician scientists. Mm -hmm.